in the world that we live in, uh, we can't avoid using the digital devices. Uh, we use them in all sorts of ways. Uh, we have our phones, uh, tablets, laptops, and computers. And now we talk about smart devices. And the more and more we use this, we find that we're using smart TVs uh, in our homes, smart appliances. Uh, we have electric meters now that are being modernized uh, and they're right in our houses. We have CCTV in our houses. Um, we have uh, more integration and connection to the internet. Um, this is going to be part of our day-to-day. -day. So we need to know how to, you know, live with this technology and use it securely. When you were growing up, your mothers or your guardians all taught you to wash your hands when you came from the bathroom or before you ate food because washing your hands, that personal hygiene, stopped you from contracting a disease. COVID came and we all knew that we had to sanitize or wash our hands or wear our masks um, or social distance. Once again, personal hygiene measures to stop us from getting infection. Come into the digital realm, cyber hygiene. These are now habits that you need to practice every day whenever you go online to secure yourself um, from the cyber criminals. Because on the global average, a cyber attack happens every 39 seconds. So there are cyber criminals prone left, right and center. And if you don't know how to secure yourself, and your information, then you're going to be the next victim of a cyber criminal. In cybersecurity, we focus on looking at risks, but the digital realm has a lot of benefits. And that's why by practicing these cyber hygiene practices, you're able to reap the benefits of digital transformation while securing yourself from criminals. And criminals are everywhere. Even when you leave your house, you don't leave your front door open, you lock it. So it's the same thing. Go online, practice cyber hygiene, stay safe. I was brought up in the rural areas, and the first time I came to Nairobi, the big city, uh, I was conned several times because I didn't understand that uh, some of the people who would greet you, they don't know you, but they greet you and then they tell you uh, stories and then you end up giving them some money and later on you realize it's a lie. But after living in Nairobi for some time, I got to know these kind of tricks and even when con men would approach me, I would just laugh and tell them, you know, try, try, try another day because I think I've gotten to know uh, how you guys operate. Now, this is what's happening in the cyberspace, uh, that when people newly come into that space, you find that uh, they, they don't know all the things that can happen there. Uh, not just good things, but also things which can harm them. And if they're not given the information, you find they've been bullied, they may have lost some money, uh, they may have lost some information and things like that. In the recent past, there have been several initiatives uh, such as the FCDO, Kiktanet, the Government of Kenya, others, have been working hard to include uh, those persons who have in the past been left behind and make sure that they benefit fully from this technology. Now, especially as Kenyans, we all know how we have benefited from information and communication technology. Uh, we are using it to entertain ourselves, but more and more, we're also using it to do our work. It's being used for commerce, people to buy and sell. It's being used to transfer money, uh, to save, to take loans, uh, to do so many things. And the vulnerable and disadvantaged persons are people who are a little bit left behind uh, in this change. Uh, some women, uh, people in the rural areas, uh, some of the youth who have low incomes, uh, some people engaged in uh, very uh, useful things like farming, but which in the past have not used a lot of uh, information and communication technology. So to preempt such uh, things from happening and even discouraging such people from using the technology, we are really keen to give them good information and to prepare them for all the kinds of things that they need to do when they're in this space uh, to keep safe, to be protected from uh, bad actors in that space, 
and generally just to have a good experience and to benefit from the technology. My name is Modau Kimulu. I am a cybersecurity counterterrorism crisis management lawyer. On the global stage, we're currently only a handful of cybersecurity lawyers on the African continent. I may be one of the only ones. I'm also a former central banker, but I also wear the hat of a Google Women Tech Maker Ambassador. My name is Dr. Paula Musuva. I've been a lecturer for the last 10 years. I'm a specialist in the area of information security and I was co-opted into this project as a consultant. My name is Dr. Catherine Gitao. Uh, my background is uh, I was an academic for a long time, uh, almost 25 years, uh, finishing as the director of the School of Computing and Informatics at the University of Nairobi. I've also uh, worked on the international stage uh, in the area of uh, cyber diplomacy at the United Nations. And more recently, I've been a public servant uh, holding high-level positions in the area of information and communication technology, uh, finishing as the chief executive officer of the ICT authority, which is uh, the state corporation in charge of uh, uh, ICT issues uh, in the government and beyond. Well, uh, I believe that this is a very uh, noble initiative and it is something for everyone. And in the next few weeks and months, there's going to be uh, television uh, adverts, uh, radio, uh, all kinds of communications on this issue that we are calling cyber hygiene. And I would encourage everyone to start uh, adopting these practices uh, so that they can be safe, so that they can enjoy the technology without suffering uh, any embarrassment or any uh, loss, and to discourage those who are really uh, not helping us because they are misusing the technology to harm others, to steal from them, and to do other negative uh, things on this technology. So let us all have good values. Let us use this technology for very good purposes. And at the same time, uh, let us all adopt the cyber hygiene practices, especially sticking, stopping, thinking, and checking uh, so that this will become a safe space for all of us. From an information security standpoint, we talk about three essential components uh, that we always want to uh, consider when talking about risk. The first is our ri the risk to confidentiality. The second is risk to the integrity. Of, and the third is a risk to the availability uh, of our uh, uh, information systems. So we want to encourage you to stop, think, and check before you act. A moment doesn't go by before you receive that text or that call from somebody who's asking you to, you know, confirm something or send something to them, right? number. You know, what we want to ask you to, whenever you get those requests, is to first of all stop. Evaluate the request. Does it make sense? Does it raise for you any red flags? Are you suspicious about some of those things? Are those requests misplaced? Why would somebody be telling you you've won a competition if you never even participated in it in the first place? So I want you to think first. Do not respond out of emotion. Uh, think about what the person is asking you to do. And when you're in doubt, probably the best thing to do is not to act at all. Ignore the message. Uh, don't send, uh, you know, that, that M-Pesa payment until you've really confirmed uh, who the person is. When you go onto these e-commerce websites, many of us are doing that, you know, we're ordering things online and they ask you for your personal information. I have seen that really lovely pair of shoes and I really really want it. It's end month. Ah, this month I'm buying myself that shoe. So I go onto my online platform. What do I do? Give all my information. My name, where I live, my telephone number. If I'm using a, a bank card, I put in my bank particulars without stopping to think. I am actually giving them all the information. How can you secure yourself against that? If it's like an, an if they have an option of mobile money payments like we have in Kenya, you know where you can do M-Pesa, M-Pesa is more secure. If you're going to use your bank card, 
then you rather do it through a payment service for a, a provider who you know act like an intermediary between you and the seller and who kind of secure your transaction as opposed to giving the seller all your information. And we have a lot of um, payment service providers, amazing ones in, in Kenya and within the region who offer those facilities. But do not go giving out all your information on these e-commerce sites because that's where I would just garner information and use that information to once again come compromise your, 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 your accounts. At the end of the day, the best cyber hygiene protector is your gut. Stop, think, check before you do anything, before you download any app, before you spend any money, before you share any personal information. Secure yourself, secure your family, secure your finances. Don't spread hate, don't spread anything. Stop, think, check. It applies in cyberspace, it applies in real life.